योग शिखोपनिषद योग शिखा उपनिषद योग शिखोपनिषद is from the krishna ajurveda and it has six chapters the six chapters contain 390 mantras the first chapter is the largest one with 178 mantras the second one has 22 the third one is 25 mantras the fourth has 25 and the fifth is the 62 mantras and the last one the sixth adhyayam has the 79 mantras so put together yoga shikhopanishad of the krishna ajurveda has 390 mantras distributed among six chapters the upanishad begins with beautifully explaining about the shad ripus that is kama krodha lobha moha madha matsaras if they are removed from the jiva it is the paramatma the upanishad doesn't say paramatma having these six ripus is the jiva it doesn't say it cannot be only jiva without shad ripus is the paramatma that doesn't that does not mean or that does not imply Paramatma with Shadripus is Jiva. No, the, the Jiva having Shadripus, unable to recognize the Paramatma. In fact, in fact, Yoga Shikha Panishad puts it beautifully: there is no Jiva Atma, there is no Paramatma. What is there is only Paramatma. and because of the six shad ripus covering it jivatma feeling comes and this removal of the shad ripus is the only method for the recognition experience what we say an enlightenment for the jivatma to feel and experience or what we say to be one with the paramatma and that is how the upanishad puts it this jiva bhava is because of the shad ripus and for that aham bhava is the important block aham bhava is the reason for the shad ripus existence and this aham bhava aham bhava i am i amness the elimination of that is the essential need and the essential dimension for the yoga shikhopanishad and this karanena vina karyam na kadachana vidyate ahankaram vina tad dehe dukham katham bhavet karanena vina karyam na kadachana vidyate ahankaram vina tad dehe he dukham katham bhavet if if ahankaram is not there there is no dukha at all so this feeling is the essential cause for the jivatma and the upanishad explains beautifully in the 51 mantra 51st mantra of the first chapter that gnana yoga and yoga are interdependent and they are incomplete with the absence of the other one supplements the other one fulfills the other yogena rahitam jnanam na mokshaya bhavet vidhe jnanenaiva vina yogo na siddhati kadachana means yogam 
without yoga there is no moksha as jnana speaks and without jnana there is no siddhi as yoga speaks to so, jnana yoga and yoga with her are the interdependent interrelated and intertwined and both go together one after the other then the upanishad speaks about the four kumbhakas jivatma bhavam to remove it that i am the body i am limited i am jivaha i am not paramatman to remove such feelings to remove that to root out them to cut off all this the four kumbhakas have been explained that is the surya bhedaha vujjayi shitali and bhastrika many of the yoga instructors and yoga teachers we teach we practice surya bheda ujjayi shitali and bhastrika but we never tell what is the final purpose what is the final goal we always say the, the surya bheda pranayama gives this result ujjayi pranayama gives this result shitali pranayama cools the body bhastrika pranayama is good for that we all talk with very meager simple physical ordinary material benefits but the yoga shikhopanishad puts it these four kumbhakas enlightens raises a person mukhena vayum sangruhya pranarandhren rechayet shitalikaranam chedam hanti pittam chudam trisham shitali pranayama talks about the shitali pranayama mukhena vayum sangruhya pranarandhren rechayet that is inhaling through the mouth and exhaling through the nostrils it cools down the system pitta is removed kshud badha is reduced hunger is removed similarly ujjayi pranayama was talked kanthe kafadi doshagnam shariragni vivardhanam nadi nadi jalapaham dhatu gata dosha vinashanam practice of ujjayi pranayama it removes kapha doshas and enhances body temperature that means jatharagni is enhanced digestive system gets improved and that is how and then practice of surya nadi surya bheda pranayama is the balances the temperature in the body entire body temperature is maintained normally irrespective of the external changes the body temperature is maintained that is the surya bheda pranayama surya bheda kumbhaka it is then ujjayi kumbhaka shitali kumbhaka then the bhastrika kumbhaka the yoga shikha parishad also gives practices of the bandha traya mula bandha udiyana bandha and jalandara bandha how it is to be practiced mula bandha as we are aware it is the bandha closing stopping the apanavayu exit route that is the anal sphincters that is mula bandha then the udiyana bandha is the middle one at the navi level bandhana is practiced then the jalandara bandha is at the throat level so mula bandha udiyana bandha and the jalandara bandha the upanishad talks beautifully the benefits of these three bandhas also so three bandhas then the upanishad speaks about the four yogas mantra yoga laya yoga hatha yoga and the raja yoga it talks of all the four important basics and says what is mantra yoga 
एंड वॉट इज दी मंत्र योग इज कॉन्स्टेंट अवेरनेस ऑफ साउंड ऑफ ब्रीदिंग एंड दिस कॉन्स्टेंट अवेयरनेस एंड एक्सपीरियंस एंड फीलिंग ऑफ द ब्रीदिंग विथ मेंटल चैंटिंग ऑफ द ओम प्राण स्पंदन शब्द विथ प्रणव शब्द दट हार्मोनाइजिंग इज मंत्र योग इट कॉल्स इट इट इज कॉल्ड मंत्र योग द नॉर्मल नैचुरल साउंड ऑफ ब्रीदिंग सिंक्रोनाइज अलाइंड विद द मानसिक ओंकार जप दिस इज मंत्र योग then the prashad talks about the hatha yoga hatha yoga is joining combining prana movement in surya nadi prana movement in chandra nadi that is flow of breath on the right side and the left side are combined that is the hatha yoga surya and chandra that is the cooling effects in the body warming effects in the body that is balanced that is hatha yoga then laya yoga is merging the mind quietening the mind reducing the thoughts in the mind that is laya yoga then the upanishad gives the talks about the various dimensions and finally beautifully the upanishad says the practices should be slow shanai shanai hi the upanishad says the practices should never be fast quick dynamic tiring exhausting sweating yoga shikha upanishad prescribes formulates defines the yoga practice should be slower and slower within the limitations of the practitioner shanai shanai hi the upanishad uses a beautiful terminology the practice has to be slow and slow it is and and it has to be with the guidance of a an instructor or a guru who abhyas yoga मुक्ति ही देन ओनली इट ब्रिंग्स आउट फ्रीडम फ्रॉम दी इंफ्लिक्शंस एंड द डिफिकल्टीज एंड दैट इज हाउ द उपनिषद रेजस द बॉडी एज ए टेम्पल ऑफ शिवा अवर ओन बॉडी इज नथिंग बट शिवालय द उपनिषद का शरीर है शिवालय इट कॉल्स and how the body is shivalaya in the shiva temple when we go there what are all the parts of the temple what are all the external and internal precincts of the temple what are all the parts of the temple the upanishad equates it that is the part of our body so body itself is shiva temple it means that all the shiva temples are within the body and the body itself is a seat of shiva shiva sthana it is and that is how beautifully the yoga shikha upanishad explains describes actually gives the temple architecture it harmonizes and synchronizes with the body structure it is simply feeling that our whole body is nothing but shiva swarupah it is the home of shiva it is the seat of the shiva then the upanishad talks about beautifully how the body is a composition of the energy centers that is the shat chakras the yoga shikhopanishad talks about the muladhara chakra having a triangular shape 
its position is the anus and the center of the anus and the genitals and then it, it is the seat of the kundalini and it is the place of the beginning of the sound the nadaha the second is the swadhisthana chakra at the navel region then the manipura chakra having the ten petals of the lotus then in the heart region is the anahata chakra having 12 petal lotus then the pitha is the purnagrihi that is the then the vishuddhi chakra is the 16 petal lotus or 16 petal chakra at the vishuddhi chakra then the agnya chakra where it is having the two petals at the center of the eyebrows and that is how the yoga shika upanishad gives a brilliant and important suggestion method and a technique within our body to recognize the energy centers and to have a meditation contemplation and have a knowledge of those energy centers within ourselves and how they can be recognized by the practice of the uddhyana bandha janandara bandha and the mula bandha the mula bandha is to recognize the muladhara chakra uddhyana bandha is for the swadhisthana and the manipura and the vishuddhi and the agnya chakra for the janandara bandha how beautifully the upanishad explains the methods of the yoga practitioners and who is the adhikari for the yoga practice who can practice the these yoga practices the upanishad prescribes wonderfully dvadashabdam tu shushrusham guruha means practicing serving a guru for 12 years learning the yoga methods and subtleties and subtle techniques of the yoga from a guru serving him for 12 years that is the upanishad beautifully explains an entire second chapter 22 mantras are full of om the akara vukara makara and mula mantra mula pravana how om is entire symbol of the world how akara vukara makara akara is the jagrada avastha vukara is the sapna avastha makara is the dreamless sushupti level when our own consciousness when we are aware of the entire world when we are aware when we are active when we are when we are in a state of knowing everything that is the akara and when we are in the sleeping with and dreaming that is ukaraha and a dreamless state is makaraha we are, we regularly undergo and our consciousness undergoes these three states continuously though there are two more states turiya and turiya tita level and all these descriptions are given by the omkaraha akara ukara makara are the jagrada sapna shushupti then the bindu is the turiya level turiya tita level and the ardhamatra is the turiya level so turiya and the three the five levels five stages of the human consciousness and well, the existence of the human consciousness equated to the akara ukara makara ardha matra and the bindu of the omkara the entire 22 mantras talks about this brilliantly and then the third chapter talks about the four stages of the nada the shabda and the omkara para pashyanti madhyama and the vaikhari the four levels of akara para pashyanti madhyama and vaikhari of a 
परा पश्यती मध्यमा वैखरी ऑफ उकारा परा पश्यती मध्यमा एंड वैखरी ऑफ द मकारा एंड द परा पश्यती मध्यमा वैखरी ऑफ द ओंकारा इट इज हाउ ब्यूटीफुल ए द लेवल्स एंड द स्टेजेस एंड एक्सपीरियंसेस हाउ टू एक्सपीरियंस हाउ टू जज आवर सेल्फ how to measure our practice levels the entire third chapter of the yoga shikha upanishad talks about this and the upanishad brilliantly and talks gives beautiful suggestions in the chaturdodhyaya the fourth ch- chapter of the yoga shikha upanishad is falsity of the jiva what we feel i am the body our relationships my body my hand my legs my thoughts this my 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 relations my friends my material all these things are this connections how these are all false fake the upanishad beautifully explains with reasons the falsity of the jivatma chaitanya seva च चैतन्य एक भेदो युक्त न कर्चित जीवत्व तथा ज्ञेय मृज्वा सर्प ग्रहो तथा रज्वा ज्ञाना क्षण नीन्स means beautiful the example is given रज्जु सर्प भ्रांति as long as we do not know that what we are seeing is the rope we continue to feel it is a snake we see a snake and we are afraid of it and this fear of the snake and seeing of the snake is lost or gone only when we know that it is not a snake and it is only a rope oh after all it is a rope until this knowledge comes then the false knowledge does not go until we understand that we are the paramatman we will not lose we will not be free from the knowledge of the feeling that we are the jivatman i am the body this wrong identification wrong attachment to this body and feeling this body is everything and all the requirements and attachments and necessities and needs and wants are for the fulfillment of this body the requirements of the body and we are engaging entire life in that and this is the falsification like the existence of the snake continues to be there as long as we don't recognize that it was actually not a snake but a rope this is the entire fourth chapter of the yoga shikha upanishad fifth chapter brilliantly explains the entire body is the vishnu alayam the body is full of vaishnava alayam how the body is narayana vishnu as we have seen the shivalaya in the first chapter and here it says the vishnu alayam it only means that the shiva and vishnu are not different and the shiva and vishnu are one and the same and that both are it is not both it is one expressing as the two and it that one expressing as the two is our self our real self so whether it is shiva or whether it is vishnu whether it is shivalayam or vishnu alayam it is our own existence the body is shivalayam the body is vishnu alayam so the, the upanishad beautifully explains that the entire structure of the vishnu temple is the body it equates to the body 
the narayana and the shiva the vishnu and shiva are within ourselves our body is so wonderful our body is so expansive and so pure so pavitrata it has to be the pavitrata the shuddhata has to be maintained as we maintain the pavitrata and the shuddhata of the shiva temple or of the vishnu temple then the upanishad gives beautifully the pancha agnis kalagrihi mulagrihi badavagrihi grahagrihi and the surya agrihi kalagrihi is the heat below the navel region moolagni he is the heat surrounding the navi region badavagni he is the heat at the thoracic chest level and the grahagni he the heat at the anus level and the suryagni he is the agni the heat spread throughout the body and just surrounding the body the temperature and the heat not only within the body the temperature heat within the body also spreads little above the body just like there is a fire is there we feel the heat of the fire for some distance similarly the heat and the temperature warmth of the body is felt can be felt even outside the body for a subtle distance for a certain distance this description comes in the fifth chapter of the yoga shikha upanishad and that feeling and experience of the heat at different levels feeling of the heat and warmth at different levels different parts different center of the body is the content of the fifth chapter of the yoga shikha upanishad and the last one is the upanishad talks about the shushumna nadi and the final kundalini energy the final rise of the coiled energy the compressed energy and that unzipping our efforts unzipping our spiritual unzipping our unknown energy levels within ourselves and that expression manifestation of unknown energy unfound energy untapped energy within ourselves is the content of the sixth chapter and of course the upanishad concludes by saying the entire world and my world and ourself is nothing but a expression and manifestation of the mind that is how the upanishad concludes by saying for this knowledge for this practice guru a master and a teacher is a must and finally chitte chalati samsaro nischalam moksha uchyate tasmat chinnam sthari kriyat pragnaya paraya vidye chittam karanam arthanam tasmin sati जगत्रय तस्ीणे जगत्ीण तिस्व प्रयत्न चित्त इफ् दट ईज चिते चलते संसारो निश्चल मोक्ष वेन द मैंड वेन द चित्त ईज मूविंग द वर्ल्ड ईज देर द वर्ल्ड मीन मूमेंट ऑफ द चित्त वेन द चित्त स्टॉप निश्चल द वर्ल्ड ईज डिस्पियर्स appearance in the existence of the world is because of the chitta chanchalyam and the nischala chitta is the absence and disappearance of the entire world that is how the yoga shikha upanishad keeps hammering the point the importance of quietening the mind soothing the mind 
and Manu Nigraha and of course it is the Chitta Karana Marthanam Tasmin Sati Jagatrayam beautifully the Upanishad puts it is the Chitta which is responsible for the existence of the Jagatrayam the three Jagats the Jagrata, Jagrata Sapna and Shushupti are there because Chitta is there Chitta is active and because this chitta becomes a kshina, the jagat will be disappeared. And thus is that is how the Yoga Shikha Upanishad slowly and steadily rises a person's understanding and guides a person into the practice of the yoga to its highest levels. And that is the essence of the Yoga Shikho Panishad. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti